Cyclone Angrek remains a Category 3 strength severe tropical cyclone as it marches out of the Australian region and into the Southwest Union Ocean Basin. Angrek a really powerful cyclone at this time, it's approaching Category 5 status on the Australian scale, Category 3 on the Sapphire Simpson hurricane scale as it marches into the Southwest Union Ocean Basin, exhibiting an exquisite satellite appearance, looking absolutely gorgeous for a said Category 3 intensity, and it's still got some more juice in the tank for your latest forecast update. We're going to be discussing what factors have caused it to intensify so unexpectedly and dramatically, and what is still left in store for this powerful tropical cyclone, because it's not done yet. Yeah and a Category 4 or 5 is certainly on the cards, that's for sure. Strong Tropical Cyclone, if you haven't already, then please do consider subscribing and leave a like on the video while you're at it. Take a look at the forecast track map. This is in the Australian scale as it's just came out of the Australian region. Maximum sustained winds of 180 kilometers an hour. That's 105 knots, pressure of 953 millibars, a Category 4 on the Australian region cyclone scale. And it's expected to be a Category 5 and hold that intensity for at least 60 hours or so as it jogs towards Rodriguez or at least south of it before it makes that southeasterly turn and heads down towards the southern ocean where it'll be absorbed by a cold front. There's no warnings or watches current from this tropical cyclone uh, for this January 26, 2024. Happy Australia Day to all of the Australian viewers there. A great public holiday that we are celebrating today. So a look at the infrared satellite imagery here. This tells us how strong the thunderstorms are around the center of circulation. This storm looking very powerful indeed. It's got a nice ring of minus 60s, uh, wrapping pretty much all the way around the center of it, the eye of the storm, which is really starting to develop quite nicely. You can see the hole in the convection. It's looked a little bit shabby over the past hour, but still pumping out some nice convective patterns. And it's looking quite strong indeed, uh, of at least category three proportions. Maybe even with that eye, it's probably getting up towards 110 knots. So tickling Category 4 on the Sapphire Simpson scale, and that would be that would mean that this storm is getting quite close to Category 5 status as well. We'll take a look at another band of the imagery from windy.com. You can see looking really decent on this one as well. It's an annular cyclone, which means it's exhibiting this donut structure. Uh, with very little banding features. There's some good outflow up to, uh, towards the northern side of the system, but that's really starting to wane now. Um, it does actually look like this cyclone's uh, undergone an eye wall replacement cycle, which is where it replaces its eye walls. Um, you could think of it like that. That's a bit of an oversimplification, uh, but it does help in aiding the tropical cyclone to get to a higher intensity later on in life. Um, and it looks like over the next two days, if it can refrain from taking any more eye wall replacement cycles, it will certainly become a much stronger system. We're talking maybe a peak intensity of around 130 knots. Never underestimate these small systems because when they wrap themselves up, they can get to extreme intensities. We've seen it before with storms like Shanfu and Goni in the Western Pacific, and those are the ones that I remember in recent times. Uh, but in the South Pacific, uh, in the Southern uh, Hemisphere and the South Pacific as well, these small storms, which are few and far between, they can really wrap themselves up nicely. Cyclone Freddy was a great example. It got to Category 5 status pretty quick, actually, and it was a pretty small system and looked very similar to uh, Cyclone Angrek, actually. Now, if you're wondering why the storm has such a strange name instead of a Australian region name such as Lincoln or Kiralee, uh, which I thought that it was going to get initially, it's because it was named by Indonesia more specifically. Uh, I think it's Jakarta, the Tropical Weather Warning Center in Jakarta. Um, they named this system Angrek using their naming list because it was in their area of responsibility just to the north of Kokos Keeling Islands when it was designated. And that's why it's received uh, such a funny name. Um, because normally we're used to seeing either a name uh, issued by Port Louis or, or no, so it'd be Reunion it is. That's where the Tropical Cyclone Warning Center is in the Southwest Union Ocean or getting a name uh, from Darwin, which is the Bureau of Meteorology's Warning Center uh, up in the Northern Territory, Darwin, the capital city of the Northern Territory. But still, nonetheless, a very nice looking system, um, a very beautiful system, that's for sure, looking very nice and photogenic. Now, there's something very interesting going on with the forecast models. They have underestimated this storm dramatically. Now the reason for this is a thing called model resolution. The models can only crunch so much data at a certain period of time. We're looking at the Eastern Rear Forecast model right now which has a resolution of nine kilometers which means it can crunch data on a nine kilometer squared basis and when you're talking about a cyclone that's about 150 kilometers across in diameter it is very hard for the, uh, for the forecast model to get an, an accurate scope of how strong the tropical cyclone is at initialization and as a result it really struggles to um, forecast the intensity of the system accurately, which is why models are generally better at forecasting the intensity 
of bigger tropical cyclones, um, such as, well, what we just recently had Cyclone Curly, but that's not an example because the models did atrociously on that, and so did the Bureau of Meteorology. And the Bureau has also really struggled with this system as well. They were initially forecasting a peak of Category 1 status, but I mean, it's tickling Category 5 status at this point. Uh, it, it's a very, very strong system indeed. Now, the Eastern Relief model does call for some, some, uh, some substantial strengthening. Uh, it does uh, maybe whack on an extra couple of um, knots at least, uh, over Saturday and then into Sunday as it marches into more favorable environments, uh, but it really doesn't get too strong as per the Eastern WF model. The Access G3 model calls for a bit of strengthening as well, but they also aren't calling for that really substantial rapid strengthening that we have seen. And that's once again, because of the resolution of the forecast model. So that's, I'm just saying that the models have actually done a very bad job at forecasting this tropical cyclone, which is why if you were to look at a forecast model for about 24 hours out, it's only got this system as essentially what's a moderate tropical storm or a very weak tropical storm at that um, very weak system. Uh, so the models, they're not doing anything wrong, uh, they just can't initialize the storm properly and as a result they're really struggling to intensify the storm uh, to the degree that it will actually intensify at. But you can see, if we were to take a look at sea surface temperatures uh, ahead of the tropical cyclone, they're very warm. When it's going to be approaching its peak intensity in around 24 to 48 hours time, it's going to be over an environment where sea temperatures are around 29 to 30 degrees Celsius. In fact, one or two spots might be getting close to 30 degrees Celsius. Where the storm is right now, it's only about 27 or 28 degrees Celsius, so it's a little bit cooler, but can certainly sustain a tropical cyclone of this magnitude. What I am saying here is there's more, more fuel for the tropical cyclone to use to build its intensity, and I mean, it certainly should be making the most of that fuel. I believe wind shear might be a little bit on the higher side for this tropical cyclone. Um, maybe in around two or three days' time, it might yeah be in a little bit of a uh, worse environment in terms of wind shear, which will probably destroy the vertical stacking of the tropical cyclone uh, by around Sunday morning or into Sunday evening as it heads towards Rodriguez. So by around Saturday evening, it will certainly be on a weakening trend. But until then, it's got a really good environment of low wind shear of around um, maybe 5 to 15 knots uh, for it to uh, move through. So it's going to be intensifying right up till about Saturday lunchtime or into Saturday evening. And just before I finish this video off, we're going to take a look at the JTWC forecast cone. They've initialized it with winds of 90 knots. I think that's a, a pretty substantial underestimation, but again, their forecast is about six hours old now, and it remains a very small tropical cyclone. You can see cyclone winds really only extending about 70 or 80 kilometers away from the storm center uh, in, the, it's, in, in its most uh, substantial quadrant, which would be the southeastern quadrant, and it intensifies up to a peak intensity of 120 knots as per their forecast which if you were to extrapolate that and say that the intensity right now is about 105 to 110 knots, meaning it's about a day or two ahead of itself, you're probably looking at a peak intensity approaching 130 to 135 knots or maximum wind speeds of about 260 kilometers an hour. But yeah, anyway, that is the latest information on this severe tropical cyclone that's marching into the Southwest Indian Ocean at this time. Looking very decent on the satellite imagery, a nice eye, beautiful convection banding around it. It's not the most beautiful tropical cyclone yet, but give it another six to 12 hours and I reckon Angrek will be there. Thank you so much for watching this video. Leave a like on the video while you're at it and also subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more content like this. And I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.